Right, so the first thing we're going to do is put in our CPU. So you push on this lever, release it, lift up from this lever here, grab your CPU, pay attention to your markings on your CPU and the markings of your socket. Place your CPU in nice and gently, aligning all your markings, and that's it. Grab yourself a T20 Torx screw, and we'll just undo these Torx screws that hold the retainer in place. Once you remove these screws that hold the CPU retainer in place, you'll see it come off and just remove it. Right here. Now remember that you're gonna need to reuse your screws, so make sure you just remove them and uh, take them out. There you go. Right, now we can install our contact frame. Usually when you undo this clamp, the backing plate on the back of the motherboard falls down. So if it doesn't allow you to screw in your screws, just check the back and you should be able to lift it up and uh, screw back in. Sometimes it is possible that it doesn't fall down, but in this case it did. So what I'm gonna have to do now is just lift this up. And this is what I'm talking about here, the backing plate. So now I'm gonna lift this up, I'm gonna line it up. And as I align it, I'm going to screw in the screws. Okay, that's one in, and it will help hold the contact frame in place, and we can tighten everything else. There we go. Put in the rest of the screws. Nice and snug, and then give it a quarter tap. So let's just get it in all the way until it stops. That's it. You'll get the feel of it anyway as you print this. We can proceed to install our SSD and our RAM. Open up your two RAM slots that you're going to use. On your motherboard, it always lets you know which RAM slots you should use first. It even has a guide here saying A2 and B2 first. Align our RAM slot with the socket. And press down. That's it. Perfect. Lastly, we have our M2 slot. So let's grab a screwdriver, undo these two screws, lift this up, install it. Aligning the notch here with the slot and pushing on a slight angle. Press down, this is a quick release latch, so very easy to install. Just press down and it automatically latches on for you. Do not forget to peel off your protective sticker here. Reline up your screws and screw back down. That's our motherboard pretty much ready to go. But remember that we will be using the thermal right AIO, so we're going to install our backing plate now. That way we don't have to worry about it when it's already in the PC case. So here I've just got the toolkit for the 1700 now. And so just ensure that you do have it in the furthest position because that's how the 1700 mount goes and basically just push it on through here push it on through and just ensure that your threads do align and come up straight now when you go to install this peel off these two adhesive strips because it's really going to help you install it much easier as it's going to help hold the mounting bracket in place and it won't just fall down as you can see now we're going to install our 1700 stands if you look closely at this you can see that it says 1700 on top of it All right so just put them down facing up so as you can see here we just put on all the stands. We install our retaining bracket. I'm just gonna have this loosely on first because I'm gonna adjust it later. And that's how you wanna install it with the curve coming in like that. Really easy way to install it. Thermal I have made installing the AIOs, coolers, so easy. You always wanna make sure that your threads are perfectly centered. That's really gonna help you with your mounting. And with all this prepared, we can now put this straight into the case and start building around it. This is your bunch of goodies right here and as you can see everything is listed here for you what goes where and our motherboard screws are these ones here so we can grab them and secure our motherboard let's install our motherboard screws now we'll start off with the two that are hidden by the m2 slot that way we can get our m2 straight back on now we can just install the rest so that's two in so we have seven more left when you're putting in your motherboard screws it shouldn't be hard to go in it should just screw straight in nice and easy they shouldn't be really any tension or it shouldn't be hard to get in and if it is then it's not lined up properly and you're most likely threading the motherboard stand the motherboard securely in good to go next we're going to put in our AIO we we'll just stand this up real quick so you have a total of four screws here one two three four that you need to remove we'll see I've already removed two let's see if this comes right out yes it does and there you go four screws one two three four and this only goes in one way you'll see the groove cutouts that are on here and you'll see where your clips are that hugs around me so you know that it only goes in one way I'm gonna have to flip these fans around just because of the way the tubing was and uh, it should be fine anyway after. We need our cables coming out on this side. So all we're doing is flipping it around like this. That's it, really simple, nothing to it at all. And we just reinstall it, that's it. The direction of flow stays exactly the same, that doesn't change. It's just where the cables are changes. And now we'll just flip these two around, just like that. 
but don't guess where your screw holes are just because your fans are lined up right next to the other one it doesn't necessarily mean the screw holes are lined up so just start it off first and then finish it off with a screwdriver or else you've got to make those really ugly screw marks on your radiator and you don't want that and that's it fans reinstalled ready to go now we'll put it back into the case or our cables are already daisy chained ready to go i did that previously let's drop our aio straight in before I had it in like this and the cables were at the back. Now, because I wanted the tubing on the right side, like so, we have to change it. Um, so I sit that there and once again, push these cables through. Now we can drop it straight in. There we go. We still have the PWM that comes straight off the pump, so remember that as well. And now, it's just a matter of how we want to install this, and most likely I want to install it together. And that's how I like it anyways. We're going to put some thermal paste on, and then we'll make sure these are, this is centered, and we'll tighten out our thumb screws, add some thermal paste, and put on our pump. For LG A1700, I like to use a nice line down the center, and I just feel that that is the best method to get thermal paste on the entire CPU. This way we know we're going to get full coverage onto the CPU. Line it up once again, spin this down a couple turns. Now let's make sure the bottom also is lined up. Yes, and then we'll screw that in. There we go. Now we'll just go slowly a few turns each side until it completely stops. And I feel that's the best way to get the best mounting pressure as well. That way, you haven't gone all the way one side first and then try to do it to the other side as well. That's it. We are done. That is our AIO installed, ready to go. And this is our PWM connector, so let's also push that through as well. Let's pull that through. Next, let's install our power supply and start routing some cables, making sure that our cable management is nice and clean and easy to access before we continue with the GPU. Right guys, so here is a perfect example of the right power supply. So as you can see here, the power supply that's already on here is approximately 200 millimeters long. And what you need is one no longer than 185. So here we have the MSI MPG A1000G, right brand new. And this would be perfect in there because as you can see, look at that. And you would also have more clearance as well for your cable management. So I think this is actually going to be the better option. So we definitely have to do this. It's just going to keep our build so much cleaner and well and better put together as well. So we're gonna have to remove this and get this in. I'm not gonna bother showing you how to remove it because it is pretty straightforward. You remove four screws and then unplug all your cables and just take it straight out. But I'll do a fast version just to show you guys anyway. So here we go. So basically I wanted to use the EVGA 1300 Platinum power supply for this. But as you can see from here, the power supply is just too long for this case. So I decided to swap it out for the MSI A1000G, which is also a PCIe 5 ready. And it's also a ATX 3.0 ready as well. So it was the better option in the end. Just like that, our power supply is already out. Look how easy that was. We'll peel this off first because you're meant to peel it off. And then you always have your fan facing outwards. Make sure your power supply sits on this here. That's to hold the power supply up. And then line up your power supply just like that and push it in. Grab your four screws and screw it in. Now we'll tighten in the next pattern. This is our GPU 16 pin, we'll leave that there. Because we have these ugly cables, I'm very tempted to use sleeved cables because it's just going to look a whole lot better. So let's do that. I have this spare lying around. This is the ADATA XPG 24 pin. And we're gonna use this because it's just going to look a little bit nicer. Because it's so bent, we're just gonna go the other way around like this. Just makes it a bit easier. Push through our 5 volt 3 pin first. There we are. Pull that through. We'll plug this in first and see how we're gonna curve it. Plug that in, show you anyway, once it's done, plug it in. Now we're gonna curve it all the way in, like so. It will sit right at the rubber grommet. That's how it's gonna have to sit, just like that. So we'll push the uh, ATX cable through, that way it's easier to plug in. Put all the slack through, like so. Here's our CPU cable, come through the top, like so, and then push through, so we can plug straight in. Here is our SATA. So we've got two SATA cables here that we need to plug in. There's one there, and then that's the other one right here. Plug them in, and then we will figure out the route. Look, there's our SATA cables plugged in, ready to go. That works out pretty good so that's how that's gonna go just like that so as you can see here all i've done here is i've tidied up the cables and i've pushed the cpu cable through here atx cable through there usb 3.0 type c and also i fed through the 16 pin cable here and i've already plugged it in so now we need to just go back to the other side and plug everything in 
So let's work our way from the bottom to the top. In the bottom left-hand corner here, we've got HD audio. Now there's always a pin missing for your plug, so line that up and plug it in. Next here, we've got USB 2.0. We've got two ports here, we'll plug it into the closest one, just like that. There's our 16 pin cable ready to plug into our graphics card. All we've done is we've plugged it in on the other side and pushed it through here, just for an easy route. Now you can decide to go a different route, but this is the best way that I found to do it, so it looks the best as well. And lastly, you've got your front panel cable, which is an all-in-one cable. Now from what I can see, all you have here is power LED, and power switch. There isn't a reset switch at all. And that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. They've made it an all-in-one cable. All you have to do is line it up with the far left first nine pins and it will plug straight in, just like that. And then we just push it straight in. And that takes care of your front panel cables in one go. Cases that are doing this now just makes it so much easier for you to plug in your front panel cables. What I've also done is I've gone ahead and pre-installed a SATA cable. So in the future, if you want to install a 2.5 inch or a 3.5 inch HDD, then it's going to be very easy because you have pre-routed cables. That's something I always like to do. Next, we're going to push in our Type-C cable. It only goes in one way. Do not listen to people that tell you that you can plug it in either way. You cannot, it can only go in one way. Push that in. Right, so now we've got USB 3.2. Now we have two of them here, one, two. So this is a great motherboard, very high end because you have two USB 3.2 ports. Usually you only have one. This is the Aorus Master, very high end, very expensive, costs about $800. So let's just line up our tab here. You always have a tab on your USB 3.2 and just plug that straight in. Perfect, be very careful when you plug in the USB 3.0 slash 3.2 as you can bend the 19 pins quite easily. Right, now we can plug in our ATX. So as you can see, I've pulled the cable through for some slack. That's because we need that in order to have a nice curve to plug in our 24 pin power cable. There we are. Now we'll plug this straight in here. We'll line up our pins like so and we'll plug it straight in. There we are. Just grab it and give it a little wiggle and push it straight in. As you can see, that's the way I needed it to plug in. I need it to have a nice curve because if I push this back anymore, it's going to curve too sharp. Next, we've got our 5 volt 3 pin right here. And if you look at your top port, you've got a 5 volt 3 pin right there. So let's plug that in, line up your 3 pins, and just plug that straight in like that. Now we've got a PWM connector right here. We're going to plug this into CPU fan number one. And of course, you can see here we've got the Type-C cable, which it comes from the USB 2.0. This is what's going to power your screen. Now that we've got it already ready to go, we can grab our screen, plug it in and magnetize it back. So here's our thermal right screen, ready to go. You've got your type C right here. Just plug that in and it will magnetize straight back on. Lastly, we've got our CPU cable in the top corner right here. So just line that up accordingly. Although you've got two sets of eight pins, you only need to use one because the other one is simply for straight overclocking. But if you're not going to overclock your CPU in any way, then you do not have to use both of them. One of them will do the job just fine. Everything plugged in, ready to go. Double check everything, make sure it's all good. So before we go any further, I just wanted to point out what all of this is up here because I'm sure it looks a bit confusing because all these cables are plugged in. If you have a look at the top right here, you have a pre-installed fan hub and you have multiple ports that you can use here. Altogether, I can see a total of 10 5 3 pins and 10 PWM connectors. So you know you've got ample room to plug in whatever you need to. And all the fans that are pre-installed here for this Montec King 95 case have been pre-plugged in into this hub. And what I did with my AIO is I've daisy chained them and then plugged them into one port. So now it will sync all together. And there's also a controller that comes off of this. That way you're able to control the RGB using the button on the front panel of the case. That's a really cool feature in itself because you don't have to worry about using software to change the colors of the RGB. You can simply use the button on the front of the case, which I'll point out in just a second. Next, I also want to show you guys what you can install in terms of hard drives. So here you've got a hard drive cage and you have a panel here which you can remove. Very similar to like a Lian Lee one. You simply undo the thumb screw here, lift and remove. Then you've got two 3.5 inch hard drive cages. But if you wanted, you could install an SSD instead. Right Now, if you install 2.5 inch hard drives here, you could still install a 2.5 inch SSD here. So that allows for a 3.5 inch, 3.5 inch, and a 2.5 inch, or just three 2.5 inches. Even with those installed, you're still able to install two more 2.5 inch SSDs right here. So there is ample room for hard drive upgrades. The title of this case says it all, Monte King 95. And I'm thrilled to be building in this case because it's just so amazing how much room you have and how great this case looks and all the features that it has. You can also see on this panel, you can even install two more 140 fans or two more 120 fans. Basically, it makes me think that this has got to be one of the best cases that I have seen that have come out in 2024. So far, I cannot find a case to match how good this case looks. It's extremely heavy, which also means that it's built very, very well. Cable management ready to go. We can now 
install no graphics card, give it a quick test run and finish off this entire build. The thing is, I've already gone ahead and installed the M2 thermal guard and it was really simple. All you had to do was reinstall it by lining up your two screws that secure it and then line it back up and screw in the two screws. I'm sorry I did not show you how to install that, but it is very straightforward. You cannot get that wrong because you have screws that need to align. With everything plugged in, ready to go, all that's really left is to install our GPU. And for this build, we are going with the RTX 4090 by Gigabyte. This is an amazing GPU. All 4090 series are just off the chain. If you're getting a 4090, you know you're gonna have the most powerful card to date. All you wanna do now is line up your rear slot here and these two slots with your rear slots here. And then align your PCIe x16 slot with the motherboard's PCIe x16 slot. This motherboard is a little bit different in how you release the GPU. Usually you release this tab here, but this being a different high-end motherboard, you have a tab here, which is so great because most of the time when you're installing a graphics card, it is so hard to press on this tab when you go to release the GPU. Let me show you how it works real quick. Line up all your slots. Once you feel it aligned, simply just push straight in and hear it click in. Then you know your GPU has been seated correctly and is installed correctly. Now, in order to remove it, you simply use this tab here that they have created for the sole purpose of releasing your GPU much easier. You press on it, you hear the click, and then you simply give it a tiny wiggle and out comes your GPU. How good is that, guys? Only a few high-end motherboards have this feature. Not all motherboards have it. So you have to give credit to motherboards that are already coming out with this. It makes it so much easier to release. Once again, let's put in our graphics card. We align it and simply push straight in. There we are. Now we grab our two screws and secure our GPU. Raise it and install your screw. Now what I always like to do is raise the back end first. Just like this. Right, first you get it as level as you can, but you raise the back end a little bit, but not too much. You don't want to accidentally break the PCIe x 16 slot. And then install your other screw. I don't know why they only use two slots for the 4090. They really should have used three. It is a beefy card. I mean, just check out the size of it, guys. It's huge. Now all you have to do is plug in your 16 pin cable, aligning your four pins. You have four pins on the top, four pins here. Align that and simply push straight in until it clicks. And that's it. GPU installed. For this, I'm gonna go ahead and use a GPU holder because I want it to have support at all times. We wanna make sure that the GPU is as level as can be because that's the best way to have it sitting. So with a little level, let's just sit it straight on top and see if it is in fact level. No, it's not. Meaning that our GPU holder is now a little bit too high. So all we're going to do is adjust it, bring it down until the GPU is level. Look at that. It is perfectly level right now. So all you want to do is ensure you give it some support right there. Don't let it go any higher or lower. Just give it that support that it needs. That is pretty much our entire build. Let's reassemble this case and let's just see how good it comes out. We can fasten the rest of the screws for the AIO and the installation panel. So we only put in two. Now we've got to put in the last two, which is one here and another one diagonal across from it, which is right here. We're now putting the rest of the screws for the radiator. We've only got four in right now, so let's put in the rest. And that is done. AIO fully installed. Let's just put the entire case back together. All right, so first I've got to close this door here and reinstall the two screws that close it up. You've got one on the top right here and you've got another just on the bottom. We've also got our HDD cage panel and then screw in your thumb screw. We'll now grab our side panel here. We've got these tabs here on the bottom. That has to slot in to the bottom and then you simply push it straight in. Fasten the thumb screw here on the side. You gotta love this huge mesh panel here with the dust filter as well on the inside. That's going to help you catch any dust that may be introduced to the case or trying to be exhausted. Makes for a very easy clean. All right, so all we really have left to do now is to just reassemble the PC case. Now, I know I didn't show how to do that in the first place, but it really is pretty straightforward and you're gonna get the idea as soon as I start reassembling this. So you saw already how I put on this side case and then the thumb screw that secures it. Now I'm going to put back on this front tempered glass panel. Now, this case also comes with a mesh panel that you're able to interchange with it if you want more airflow, but I personally think that the tempered glass looks way better. So I'm just gonna put back the tempered glass instead of the mesh panel, but just know that you have that option. All right, so you've got these tabs at the bottom here of this tempered glass, and then you've got four nipples up the top that need to push into the clips up the top here. You line these tabs up with the openings at the bottom here, slide it in, ensure the tabs do sit inside, and then simply just push it back in, and it will clip straight back in. Very simple, 
great tallest design. Next, we're going to put back on our side tempered glass. Same principle here. You've got these tabs here at the bottom and then you've got five nipples at the top that will now also push into these opening holes at the top of the PC case. Align this with the bottom, ensure that it slides on and then just push straight in. That's it. Just like the other side panel, you now have a thumb screw here that you need to fasten and that takes care of that. Lastly, all that is really left is this top panel here. And this is it here. As you can see, it is a huge mesh panel here. But the other thing that's great about this case is that you've got basically a eight millimeter opening before the top panel meets the case. Meaning any hot air that needs to be exhausted out of the case will exhaust straight out of the top. But at the same time, it has breathing room because there is a mesh panel that goes all the way around this top panel. So that's pretty cool as well. Now, all you do is simply sit it on top and press straight down. And that's it. That pretty much completes the entire build. So as you saw, disassembling this is actually very easy. It's a complete toolless design. You don't need any tools at all. It just has thumb screws for the side panels and thumb screws for the HDD cage and everything just clips on and off. Making this case seriously, a completely toolless design case. And that's great for PC builders like myself because it just cuts a little bit of time out of your PC building process, making it so much easier, more user-friendly and in the end, making it better for all the consumers. Lastly, we have this antenna here that we need to install to the IO Shield. Now with antennas, there's always two parts of it. One is for your Bluetooth and the other is for your Wi-Fi. So here I've already screwed one in, just there. And now we're going to screw in the other one. And it really is as simple as lining it up and screwing it in. You can't go wrong here. Just righty tighty, lefty loosey, and that's it. And this is your Aorus antenna right here. And as you can see, you have a magnetic base here, which can magnetize to any metal of the case. So whether you want it on top and you want to flick this up, or you want this on the back and then leave it there like that, you can do that. It just makes it so much more versatile because you're able to place it where you want. So it's out of the way. Let's give this some power now, plug in a keyboard and a mouse. And I want to show you guys what you need to download in order to get this AIO to work. That's the last thing we need to do in order to ensure this PC works. Obviously, you need to download the drivers for the graphics card and also, if you want to run anything off your motherboard, such as the software, then you would download the Gigabyte software as well. But in this case, I'm just going to show you how to download the Thermal Right Frozen Warframe AIO software so you're able to control it, customize it, whatever the case may be. Here I have a wireless keyboard and mouse combo USB dongle. I'm just going to plug that into one of the USB ports at the back. And if you take a close look at the back here, you can see the amount of USB ports that we have on this motherboard. Higher end motherboards always tend to have more USB ports than other lower end motherboards. And that's a fact, it really is. The overall appearance of the motherboard is just a lot nicer. Just plug in some power right there, we'll turn it on. We'll plug in a HDMI cable for our monitor right here. And we'll grab our keyboard and our mouse, ready to go. Press the power button on the front here. And there we are. That looks absolutely amazing guys. I cannot stress just how nice this PC case looks. And the title itself explains it all, Montec King 95. It probably is one of the kings of cases because even now with all the cases that have been released, Lian Li Dynamic Evo XL, I personally think this is one of the best looking EATX cases now because of one, the, the square design of the PC case fans, the versatility of the case, how much storage room you have, and even using the reverse blade fans that they have used on this side here. And with all the mesh panels that surround the case, even the backside of it has all this opening mesh. It just allows for your PC to breathe so much better and thereby keeping it very cool. And as you saw in the entire build, it was so easy to build in this. And also having a PWM 503 pin hub built in with 10 ports of each is just amazing. And even with a 4090 installed, a 360 AIO, you're still able to have so much room to build in this PC case that when you go to disassemble it or remove something, you have so much room to do that. And that's what makes it great as well. So now I'm gonna show you guys how you download the software, where you go, which one to download, and how you basically set it up. Now, in order to download the software, connect to Wi-Fi straight away. Now from here, what you wanna do is type in Thermal Right, okay? Now, it will open up the page and you will see Thermal Right here. What you wanna do is go straight into Support. Straight away, we're taken to the Support page, but you still need to go to Support here and then go to Download. Now, what I've been told by Thermalbrite is that they, they are always working on upgrades for their software. So don't be alarmed if something isn't working thus far. Just know that they are slowly working on updates and trying to perfect the software. As you can see here, we have download. And the first one is for Thermalbrite Vision. If you don't have vision, do not download that. Next, we have Thermalbrite Water Cooling LED Screen Control Software. And as you can see under here, you can use this software for these different models of Thermalbrite AIOs. 
Here we've got frozen warframe, so this is definitely what we need. Now you can see all this Chinese writing and then you see English version right here. Download the English version by simply clicking on it and now it will start to download. I've already downloaded it, so I'm just gonna stop this right here, but you get the picture, let it download and then it will download. Then what you wanna do is go into the folder, right click on it and extract all. Simply click extract. I've already extracted it, so that's why it's doing this. I'm gonna skip that. And then it will open up the extracted folder. From here, simply right click on the TRCC software and run as administrator. Click yes here to run the setup and follow the prompts all the way through to install it. It will begin to install. And then once it finishes installing, you're going to see this on your desktop. Finish, right? We'll close this up and straight away, you're going to see it right here on your desktop. Now, what you wanna do is run as administrator and click yes. You don't see the software as yet, but in the bottom left right hand corner here, you can see the software. Once you open it, your software will open immediately. As it opens, you will see it also appear onto your screen of your AIO. So now it really is really simple how you use this. It's not hard at all. Here, you're able to choose from all different things. Whatever you choose from any of these preset things right now, it's going to appear on your screen, right? So you select any of these and as you can see, it cycles through at the same time. And these are all your preset themes that you can choose from straight away. If for some reason you want to customize one of these to your own, for instance, I personally love this one here, but what I don't like is that it's all in US terms, meaning if you go to the equalizer tab right here and click on it, you're able to select what you wanted to display according to the tabs that are here. For instance, you can add custom text. If you type M, I, whatever, and then you click save, if you go to save it without renaming it, when you click save, it's going to say the original theme cannot be changed. This is because they have blocked you from changing the original themes. But what you can do is rename it. And once you rename it, it's no longer the original theme. So you just put my in front of it or whatever you want. And now you click save. And just like that, when you go back into the Thermorite logo here, you have your own theme at the very bottom right here. And there is your custom text. You can remove that if you want. So you can drag that wherever you want, just drag it, put it wherever you want and continue from there. Remove it, deselect it, just like that. Now here in Australia, we don't go by year, month and day, we go by day, month, year. So what I'm going to do is select day, month, year, 12 hour format, because that's what I like. And then I'm gonna save it as my theme seven, click save. So now when I go into the themes again and I click on this, it's going to show day, month and 12 hour format exactly the way that I want it. Don't worry about trying to adjust the time. All you need to do is adjust the time here and then it will show according to where, what time you have set on your desktop. And we're here, Melbourne, Sydney. So now that I've changed the time, I'm gonna have to close this up and reopen it. Make sure you exit it completely, exit, and then reopen it, run as administrator. Yes, as soon as we open the app, you will see the theme display straight onto your screen. That's how it works you need to ensure you open the app and that it reads so that it can display. So now as you can see, it has fixed the time because it's now sensing the correct time. Now I'm gonna customize it to what I want once again. I click here, my pre-save theme from before is saved, 12 hour format, day, month, year, and there you have it. So that's one way you can customize the preset themes. The other question I get asked a lot is, does it retain the settings you have saved when you reopen it? The simple answer to that question is yes. However, you need to also understand that how this software works is when you reboot your PC and it boots back into Windows, the theme will not show until the software opens because you have to understand it in layman's terms. I hope that makes sense to you guys because I'm trying to break this down as clear as possible and as simple as possible. How can it display the theme that you're selecting if the software hasn't opened yet and registered to the screen. So I really hope this helps you guys out and it gives you a better understanding of how this thing works. Okay, and well, there you have it guys. That pretty much brings us to the end of this video. And I really hope you got something out of this and it really helps you understand how to use the Thermorite software. As you saw, it really is pretty straightforward. Now, I do know that there are people who still have their concerns about the software not working, but I really couldn't break it down any simpler than I did just then. If you're finding that you're having issues with it, just simply wait for an update, be patient and eventually, Thermalright will probably resolve the issue. Getting back to the PC, it really does look amazing. I love the purple and light blue theme. I think it looks fantastic. And as you can see, all the RGB fans on this case are synced to the same color. So even when you look at the AIO fans up the top here, 
they are also showing light blue and purple. So I have everything synced together so that it looks great. Now, if you want to contrast between your fans, then all you really have to do is unplug it, plug it into the motherboard's 5 volt 3 pin, and then you could set a different color scheme for either the 24 pin RGB cable or even the AIO fans. But personally, I think it looks great when everything is synced together and you choose a different color scheme every time to your liking. So I really hope this video helps you understand how to build in the Monte King 95 I personally think this has got to be one of the best cases being released now from 2023 to 2024 and to this day I don't think there is a better case that can top this at the moment. The features of it, the amount of space, how much room you have to build in it is just amazing. And I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed building it because I really love building in this case specifically because of how it's designed. As always, be sure to follow along for more PC builds just like this. I have so many more coming up, including ITX builds and other ATX builds as well. I personally love building PCs and I've been doing so for the last four to five years. What keeps me going is the fact that I can buy parts, envision the PC build, put it together and just be completely blown away by how it came together and the final product, just like you see right now. I had no idea it was going to come out this good. The end product always surprises me just how nice it looks in the end. I really hope you enjoyed it, guys. And if you got something out of this video or you just like the build, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Mike with Mikey's Vlogs, signing off. See you in the next one, guys. Bye for now.